Welcome to this lesson. In our previous lesson, we started a discussion on diversity of living and unliving things. We're going to continue our discussion in this lesson, but we'll focus on the life processes. At the end of the lesson, we have one objective of explaining the seven life processes all living things undergo. In the previous lesson, we mentioned that the life processes can be summarized using a mnemonic, which we saw as Mrs. Gren. And we saw that M for movement. And we define movement as a change of position of either the whole or part of the body of an organism. So in movements, the emphasis in this, the whole or part of the body changes position. So there's a change in position of the whole or part of the body of the organism. And that summarizes movement. The assignment in the previous lesson where we asked another name for movement largely has to do with when the organism moves its whole body from one place to the other. And we refer to that as locomotion when the organism moves its whole body from one place to the other the next one is reproduction and that is the ability of the organism to produce offspring or young ones of its own kind the key word here is young ones or offspring and the offspring should be of the animal's own kind So with this in mind, we know that uh, an adult male and an adult female will give birth to a young, a baby who would also grow up to eventually become the male or female adult. Similarly, um, a dog, a male and female would mate and also give birth to a dog or a puppy that grows up to become either the dog or the bitch. So to say, then you can have the cock and the hen would also do that. The hen lays egg. When the egg hatches, we have chicks being developed. Okay, so we don't expect the eggs of chicks uh, of the hen to hatch, and then we see some other animal like a dog or a snake coming out from that. Okay, so that's largely what happens there. Offsprings or the young ones are of the animal's own kind. And that largely has some biblical precedents where the creator mentions that he's creating man in his own image. We are seeing a reflection of that in here in living organisms reproducing and doing that as a reflection of the animals themselves. Next is sensitivity, which is the ability of the animal to respond to stimuli. I refer to stimulus as a change in the internal or external condition of the um, animal or the organism. And this change largely triggers a response. The response that the animal or the living organism gives to this stimuli is what we refer to as sensitivity. In the previous lesson, we asked another name for stimuli, and that is irritability. So either sensitivity or irritability, we are still referring to the same thing. Next is growth, which is the irreversible increase. So the increase in size and weight is only always in a forward direction. It doesn't go back down. So the organism increases in size and weight and doesn't experience a decrease. I mean, unless in the case of um, the Benjamin Button's disease, which is a rare one, um, every living organism largely undergo growth in the forward direction. So the increase in the protoplasm of the cell results in the growth or the increase in the mass and weight and size of the living organism. So the increase in here is irreversible. 
and it has to do with the size and weight of the organism. The next one is respiration, which largely has to do with the release of energy from the breakdown of food. So when the break food is broken down to release energy, largely with, so we say either in the absence, with, so that is plus, or without, minus, the use of oxygen. So when food is broken down to release energy in the presence or absence of oxygen, we refer to that as respiration. Of course, we'll deal with these and other organ systems in much detail in our subsequent lessons. Then we have excretion, which deals with the removal of the toxic products of metabolism. So that's their focus in here, or waste metabolic substances from the body. And that largely characterized by um, excretion, where waste metabolic products are released from the body. And finally, we have nutrition, and that is the ability of an organism to manufacture and consume its own food. So manufacture and take in food. It's largely characterized by nutrition. And the assignment. From all these seven life processes, we've seen that death, which all living organisms exhibit, is conspicuously missing. So the question is, why is death not classified as a life process? In this lesson, we looked at the life processes in much detail. So we've looked at the definitions for each of the life processes, movement, growth, sensitivity, respiration, reproduction, excretion, nutrition. And we've also seen the key words and key terms that are used to describe each of these life processes. In our next lesson, we're going to look at classification of living organisms. See you in the next lesson.